In this video, we're going to look at how we can measure the idiosyncratic risk associated with a specific investment. We've talked about what it is and the difference between idiosyncratic and systematic risk, but in this particular case, we're going to need a measure so that we can better understand exactly how much risk we're exposed to by investing in a particular asset. So if you want to talk about that measure, stick around. Since most people will want to bear as little risk as possible per unit of return, we need a way to measure idiosyncratic risk. For that measure, we turn to basic statistics. Idiosyncratic risk is often measured as the standard deviation of the returns for an asset. The standard deviation, or sum of the squares as it is often called, simply compares each observation to the mean and squares that difference. Then it sums the variance for each observation and finally scales that number by the population or number of observations in a sample. The formula used to compute standard deviation is the following. Standard deviation, often denoted by sigma, is the square root of the summed differences between observation x and the average of all of the observations, x bar, squared, divided by n minus 1, where x is the individual observation, x bar is the average value of a series of observations, and n minus 1 is the number of observations in the data set, less 1 to account for the fact that the data is a sample and not the true population in total. Imagine we are looking at a set of stock returns in which we have measured the annual return for a particular stock for each of the last five years. We've noted the following returns over that time. A 10% loss, a 20% gain, a 25% gain, a 0% gain, and a 15% gain in order. The arithmetic average denoted by X bar of those returns is simply the sum of those values divided by the number of observations. In other words, X bar or the average is equal to the sum of each of these individual observations, negative 10% plus 20% plus 25% plus 0% plus 15% all divided by five or 10%. So to calculate the standard deviation, we simply sum the squared differences between each observation and the mean and then divide by n, like this. 10% minus 10%, in this case, the first 10% is the return in year one, and the 10% that we're subtracting from it is the X bar or the mean return over the five years, squared, plus 20% minus 10%, so 20% the return the second year, that 10% again is the uh, average return over the five-year time horizon, squared again. Plus 25%, the return in the third year, minus 10%, the average across all five years, squared again. Plus 0%, the return in the second to the last year, minus the 10% average return, squared again. Plus 15%, the return in the last year, minus 10%, the average return across all five years, again squared, Add all of that up and divide by the number four, which is five observations minus one, and we get a standard deviation of 14.6%. The standard deviation is a measure of variability. For normally distributed data series, we know that 68% of the observations fall within one standard deviation of the mean. For in this case, 10% mean plus or minus 14.6% sigma, or from a loss of 4.6% to a 24.6% gain. We also know that 95% of the observations fall within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99% of the observations fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So the bigger the standard deviation, the wider the possible outcomes for the underlying data. The bigger sigma is, the wider the variability you can expect when sampling the data. In other words, a company that has more idiosyncratic risk will be associated with higher degrees of standard deviation of their returns. In other words, larger degrees of uns uncertainty as measured by standard deviation are associated with greater levels of idiosyncratic risk. In Excel, you can use the function STDEV and then in parentheses the data set that you want to use to calculate the same value. 